and the Curry experiment, fix Scrum, and start Radwin England's to-do list of six countries. England, lest we forget, finished a shocking fifth in last season's Guinness Six Nation. On Tuesday, they announced their squad for this year's edition. A grand slam must be their only measure of success. England still have problems and painful dilemmas. There are the bizarre principles on which they choose their squads under Eddie Jones, a mountainous debate to be resolved in midfield, also a lack of scrum power and of a number eight and confusion in other positions. And what to do with Marcus Smith, the nation's darling. Manu is key, even when injured Manu Tuolaj's career has been so savaged by injury that he has played in only one-third of the games England have played since his first cap. But whether fit or unfit, he still dominates every selection debate. For a long time he has been the only back with a definitive physicality so when fit it is easier for the rest to fall into place. A fit to Alagi enables, say, Owen Farrell, George Ford, and Henry Slade to slot in a round. But he has been injured again. To play Ford, Farrell, and Slade as a trio leaves England wide open to being beaten up in the midfield, and Farrell may only just be fit in time anyway. And without Tuolaji, any plan of going with the public vote in southwest London and teaming Marcus Smith with Farrell and Slade hardly bears thinking about. Tuolaji's injury sends reverberations round the whole squad selection. Solution they must start the season with the masterly Ford at fly half, Farrell also to join the squad to contend when ready, the outstanding Alex Lazowski to push them. Importantly, Mark Atkinson should be in the squad and start at 12 at Mayfield. Atkinson is big and physical but clever. Marcus Army, what to do with England's young meteor? Sometimes the noise does him few favors, and as one national newspaper said, he has not been near his best this season. Solution Smith should play for England against Italy in Rome. He should not start before. Scattergun firing England's bewildering three-strand selection policy is radically different to that of all five of their fellow contenders in the Six Nations. Jonas Scattergun approach preserves, as if pickled, a small inner group of experienced, untouchable trustees, and yet conversely, he also grabs unknown players from the ether. Like some kind of music scout, always claiming to have discovered a great new band, often, they made a terrible din. The third principle, apparently, is not to choose anyone who evokes enthusiasm from the general public or media or fellow coaches in the Gallagher Premiership. Solution do the status of test rugby some honor, and pick the very best team for each game. Playing without a number eight having found Billy Vunipola wanting, Jones crudely switched Tom Curry to number eight. Curry is a world-renowned flanker, but nothing special at number 8. It weakens two positions, so are England desperately short there. Tom Willis at Wasps is almost as good as Jack, his injured brother, Sam Simmons of Exeter Chiefs, a British-Irish Lions test player, is a considerable contender and Alex Dombrandt is splendid for Quinn. So why the Curry carve-up? Solution and the experiment. Back row of Courtney Laws, Curry, Simmons. In the squad, Willis, Dombrandt, Sam Underhill. History men traditionally, England were a scrummaging nation, but at present they are drastically short of wrecking ball power and their development structure is not throwing up the next monster. On the loose head side, Leicester Tigers may have done Ellis Genge no favors personally by making him captain. Genge, who will surely be superseded for the Six Nations by Joe Marler, needs to get his head down. On the tight head side, Kyle Sinclair has had the shirt but has never impressed us quite as much as the starter as he did in the years when he came on as replacement after the heavy scrums and thundered around the field to great effect. The old contemptibles up front will tell you that Will Stewart of Bath is off form and that Will Collier of Quinns is the strongest stopgap around. Solution Marler, Collier, both to start up front, Trevor Davison in squad, Sinclair becomes game-changing option on bench. Wings clipped crisis. Neither Johnny May nor Anthony Watson, the incumbent England wings, was anything near his considerable best and in any case, Watson is out for the whole tournament. Another wing contender, Elliot Daly, has probably lost his position at full back to Freddie Stewart. England must find out about Adam Radwin, who is very fast and physical for Newcastle Falcons. They need to find punch out wide. Dallas talents assure him of a place if fit. The brilliant performance by Joe Marchant for Harlequins last week surely ushers him into the squad as a center or wing. The Lucian Radwin must be given three matches. New Austin threat Austin Healy might have been a controversial figure as a player and might remain so as a bystander these days in rugby. But he had a brilliant versatility. In fact his ability to adapt actually held his career back because he was never able to concentrate on one position. Is the richly talented Max Malins of Saracens going down the same route? Malins is a magnificent player, he has supreme footballing abilities and there is an electricity about him. He must be in the squad. England should allow him to contend with Stewart at full back for a time. If he does not make the starting team, he must be on the bench for every match. Solution starts season on the bench, and then in later seasons, when things settle down he can compete at fly half 
possibly with the promising Smith. But not one drop of his talent must be wasted. Big Ben strikes. No one has ever shown such loyalty as Jones has to Ben Youngs at scrum half. He has 112 caps and is talking about carrying on until the 2023 World Cup in France. But that is not the whole story. Jones messed up totally with his lineage at scrum half for the most recent World Cup. This time, he is in danger of doing so again. The selection of Rafi Quirk, the Tyro at Sail Sharks, and who would hardly have started a match but for the injury to Faf de Klerk, is improbably early. Bristol Bears' Harry Randall or Andy Uren appear to be next in line, Rafi appears at present to be a Quirk. Solution Young's to be hounded for his place by Randall with the enduring Danny Kerr great squad choice and bench man. Glamour Boys England need some devil in their team. Crowd pleaser. Hero. The news that Jack Noel is almost back to full pelt after injury is outstanding. He can galvanize a dressing room. He is a brilliant competitor with the reactions of a lightning bolt. Alfie Barbary of Wasps has not been back for long after injury, but is highly rated by Jones. Paolo Odegu, the dazzling rising star of last season, is now fit. Solution Jack, Paolo, Alfie. Next Gen is gathering. Thank God. Shadow Men England are desperately short of opportunities to see their second string and newcomers. There is no shadow team. So many likely squad players have never been seen out of their familiar club environment. Solution England must revive a proper 18 packed full of the next cabs off the rank. It would galvanize the whole scene. Stephen Jonas England Six Nations squad backs F. Stewart, M. Mallins, E. Daly, A. Radwin, A. Lazowski, J. Noel, J. Bassett, O. Farrell, M. Atkinson, H. Slade, J. Marchant, G. Ford, B. Youngs, H. Randall, D. Kerr. Forwards J. Marler, E. Genge, J. George, L. Cowan Dickey, J. Blamire, W. Collier, K. Sinclair, T. Davison, M. Itoge, J. Hill, C. Laws, E. Stuke, T. Curry, S. Underhill, A. Barbary, B. Vunipola, S. Simon.